Hello, this is Tex Andrews with LightZone Project again, part two of the tool anatomy tutorials. In these tutorials, I'm just familiarizing you with the tools in a brief way. I'm not really showing real world examples of how you should use these tools in an editing session. Let's go back and talk more now about the tool tabs at the bottom of our tool. Before we do that, I want you to notice that I've opened up two other tools and why will become apparent in one moment. We're going to talk about this box here, the invert mass box first. I'm going to go up to the editor menu bar. Once again, I'm using an attenuated area so that we can focus on the tool use. I'll click on one of these regions. I'll draw a region. In a subsequent video, I'll talk about regions and their uses, their ins and outs. In this video, I just want to show how a region winds up being associated with a tool. Now I've created this region and I want to look, you to look at the top of the tool and its toolbar and note that inserted between the tool icon and the button that allows you to expand and collapse the tool has been inserted a new icon. And that icon corresponds to this one, the one on the editor menu bar, that designates these regions. Note that these other two tools, if I collapse them, it'll become more obvious. These other two tools don't have that icon between the tool icon and the, exp and the uh, expand or contract uh, tool button. It's only here where I've added a region. This is a quick way to know whether you've added a region to a particular tool in a tool stack, particularly a collapsed tool stack. Also, these regions can be hidden from view and you can lose track of whether a tool has a region associated with it. Looking here will tell you, oh yes, that tool has a region. Now let's open this up. I'll get rid of these two. I am going to go back up to the editor menu bar and click on this icon that brings our region back. If I double click here, you can see the region comes back. I have adjusted the feathering area in that way. Now I'm going to slide the saturation bar all the way over and you can see that the interior of this area has been fully saturated and the feathering area shows decreasing amounts of saturation as you move outwards to the outer edge of the feathering area. If however we hit the invert mask button now you see that this saturation slider applies to everything outside the region and the feathering is reversed. It goes from the strongest here to the weakest here and the inside now of this area is completely unaffected by this tool. In this way regions can become very flexible and you can use regions not only to create an area where you want to affect change but also protect an area where you don't want any changes. I am going to select this with a right click and delete the region because now I want to talk about these two areas of the tool settings tab. The top is blending modes and here we have a whole list of blending modes. Doug Pardee has written an excellent piece found on the forums at our site www.lightzoneproject.org about the blending modes and what they do. I'm going to select one here and you will note quite a difference in the look of the image. And you may say to yourself, wow, that's too much. I don't like that blending mode. Well, hang on a second and adjust the tool opacity with this slider here and you see that you can affect interesting changes 
through a combination of your sliders up here and your blending mode and your tool opacity slider here. So that's all for this second part of the three-part videos on tool anatomy. Join me for the third part when we talk about the color selection tab.